Sam, can you take us through just a little bit of an understanding of the different asset classes that people can actually invest in? Yeah, absolutely. And let, let me start in its most pure form. You know, what is an investment as the slide suggests in front of you? Well, typically it's the outlay of resources in majority of cases, money, usually for some type of profit or income. And this has changed and it's become more expansive over the last 20 years. Historically, an investment was something that was in shares, or publicly listed companies. People would invest into various bank accounts and term deposits, which is again, a very popular way of investing, through to residential property at the homes that we live in. What has changed and has accelerated in the last 10 to 15 years is that the types and ranges of investments that people can make, often with little sums of money. It can be unlisted assets, things like in infrastructure or types of unlisted property. It can be in alternatives, investments that aren't what we call correlated with public share markets through to other forms of commodities and more recently uh, crypto and crypto investments for people as well. So it's a big, wonderful and really exciting broad array of things that we can now put our money into with the hope of income or with the form of growth. Thank you, Sam. And, and I think you've highlighted that these different asset classes or investments come with a different level of risk and reward. And I think we can see by this slide, we've got sort of a number of different sort of asset classes sort of pictured out on a spectrum. Reuven, can you just take us through these different asset classes and talk to us a little bit about risk and reward? Okay, in terms of risk and reward, they always go together. As we see on this spectrum, sort of bottom left, you have what I call the defensive or more conservative asset classes or investment markets of cash and fixed interest. Fixed interest are things like bonds, uh, government bonds, inflation-linked bonds, international bonds, and so on. But they are basically, um, they depend uh, on the interest rates and um, the capital growth over there is very different from as you go up the spectrum uh, towards the right, where you have shares and property, the traditional growth asset classes or investment markets. Um, now, the difference between these two main camps, there are variations, as Sam will elaborate. Uh, the difference between these two main asset classes is that growth asset classes, historically, they give the higher return, but in the short term, they zigzag more. There's more volatility in the price of those assets over the short term compared to cash and fixed interest, cash and fixed income, where there is a lower return, a lower return, but a smoother ride. They don't zigzag as much in terms of price fluctuations as growth asset classes. And then we also have some newer uh, uh, investment classes or investment markets, as Sam has alluded to, alternatives infrastructure and private equity. Um, infrastructure is an interesting one because traditionally we think of infrastructure as the pipes that sort of transport goods, services and people from, you know, one place to another. Um, but now with the rise of the digital economy and uh, alternative energy economy and recyclable economy, there are sort of newer pipes and um, even the older traditional pipes have been sort of enhanced by these developments. I'll leave that to, to Sam to elaborate on. Uh, but I do want to sort of point out the unicorn in the top left quadrant. Now, a unicorn is a mythical beast. Uh, we hear about it, but we know as a fact it doesn't exist. So that unicorn in the top left uh, quadrant of this uh, graph and the spectrum here is alluding or pointing to the fact that there are no such things as an investment market or an asset class that gives high returns for low risk. It doesn't exist just as the unicorn doesn't uh, exist. We might like to believe that there is some sort of magical investment for us that gives us high returns for low risk or high returns for no risk. But if it's too good to be true, it is. So I'll, I'll hand back over to Sam to sort of just uh, describe the newer developments and some of the sort of asset classes and investment markets and uh, the way people 
without great sums of money can um, participate in these um, uh, investment markets as well. Yeah, let's start at the the midpoint um, and infrastructure which you touched on. Um, they are in some forms the pipes uh, that you were talking about. I think of infrastructure investments as investments in essential assets. It could be airports, it could be toll roads, it could be ports, but more recently, with the world decarbonising, it now includes exciting investments in wind and solar assets as well. It's at the midpoint because it has uh, what we call a core plus inflation um, dynamic. In other words, you can extract stable income from investments in infrastructure, but there's also the potential for capital growth. And for some people, they may like a blend of both of those. Alternatives also sits at that midpoint. They can be listed, they can be unlisted. Alternatives can be things like investing in water through to more recently, things like private credit, specialist forms of lending, catastrophe reinsurance and the like. I think the most important takeaway here is if the equity market goes up or down, the return behaviours in alternatives are very, very different. They're not linked to the share market. On the far right-hand side, as you pointed out, at the higher risk um, spectrum, but also the higher return spectrum, uh, are wonderful businesses that we know now that are at, were at one stage private. Companies like Airbnb and Uber, uh, Facebook even, are wonderful examples of private equity investments. So investing in companies becoming a shareholder, but in sh companies that aren't listed on, say, the Australian Stock Exchange or in the US market. Um, often they come with lockups or illiquidity, uh, with illiquidity premiums, and we're going to touch on that one shortly. Um, but private equity was historically an investment only for institutions and large pension funds. And in the last five to 10 years, that has completely changed. With very, very, very small sums of money, people can access this incredibly exciting asset class.